This week on Barely Homesteading, repairing our chipper. So as I mentioned in a previous video, uh, we had a little bit of problem with our chipper. And we, it sounded like we had uh, fed a rock through it, but as it turns out, some of the bolts had gotten loose and had fed themselves through the chipper. So I thought I had fixed it and replaced a couple of the bolts that uh, were missing, but we come in here, here between the cowl that uh, contains the impeller of the chipper, and the, the motor block, the engine block, there is some, looks like there's some bolts there that have come loose. And the cowling now can vibrate as the chipper is running. And the impeller is now rubbing on part of that cowling. So we needed to pull this whole thing apart, pull the impeller off, replace those bolts, and then put it back together. Okay, so... <clears throat> First thing, we're going to pull this chute off. Now I'm going to pull, or I'm going to separate the two halves of the cowling. I'm just going to leave this back uh, chute attached, the input chute, and pull this all off together. First thing to do that is I need to remove these two pins that holds the guard in place inside. And now it's just a matter of removing all of the bolts holding the two halves of the cowling together. All right, so to get the impeller off, first thing that you need to do is remove the center bolt that is attaching the, the uh, impeller to the shaft of the motor, the engine. Now this bolt may be on there quite tight. If you give it a couple of taps, it should loosen up to where you can get it off. If that doesn't work, then what you will probably need to do is put some penetrating oil on it, WD-40 or something like that. Let it sit for a little while. Try to give it a couple of taps again. If that still doesn't work, then you're going to want to jam something, take the uh, chipper blade off and put something between the, the gap in the impeller and part of the structure to hold it in place so that you can get some leverage on it. Alright, so when you get the bolt off of that <clears throat> impeller, what you will find is that the bolt goes down about half the length of the bolt before it interfaces with anything. But, if you look inside that hole, you'll see that the hole in the impeller is threaded. It's a larger thread than the bolt. So what's going on is there's actually two threaded holes. There is a threaded hole in the impeller that is th a through hole. And then there is a threaded hole in the shaft that is attached to the engine of the chipper. And it's that threaded hole in the shaft that interfaces with this bolt. The threaded hole in the impeller is used for extracting the impeller, for taking it off. And so you can buy an extraction tool that is essentially a bolt that will interface with this threaded hole and has a smaller shaft on the end of the bolt. 
as you thread that bolt into here, that shaft on the end of the extraction tool will bottom out in the blind hole of the shaft of the engine. And so as you continue to tighten that bolt, it will pull the impeller off because the bolt now has nowhere to go. It's trapped in that blind hole. So why buy an extraction tool when you can make one? I looked and, found, and didn't find a bolt in my current uh, inventory that matches this threaded hole. So I'm going to go pick one up at the hardware store and we'll make our own extraction tool and pull this impeller off. Uh, so we'll check back with you once we get that bolt and uh, make our extraction tool and we'll show you how to do that. All right, so I picked up a bolt uh, from the hardware store. This is a 7 16 fine thread, so it's a 20, 7 16 20 threaded bolt. Uh, it's a two inch long bolt. I'm going to drill a hole in the end of the bolt where I can put attach a rod and then that rod will stick out past the end of the bolt and hopefully this will work to extract that impeller. Now, one thing that I'm going to do, I don't do a lot of metal cutting, at least not right now, and so I don't have a lot of the normal tools uh, that you would see. So I just have a regular drill press here and I don't have any cutting fluid. So I did a little research and there are some people who say that you can use lard as a cutting fluid. And so I've got some bacon grease and I'm going to put that on here and see how well it works. I'll let you know. All right, so that worked pretty well. Um, I, I think this drill bit may be a little dull. Um, it was starting to catch the further I got down there um, but I've got a hole that's probably a oh, quarter to maybe three-eighths of an inch deep and that's really all I need for what I'm doing uh, just have to have it stable enough to capture that that uh, rod that I'm going to put into there to extract the impeller so let's get this cleaned up and see how it works all right so here's our homemade extraction tool. As I said, this is a 7 16 20 bolt, so fine thread. Drilled the hole in it, and then I just bought a one and a half inch long number four taper pin, and it sits right in that hole that I put in the uh, bottom of the bolt, the end of the bolt. And let's see if we can extract that impeller. Okay, so it seems like the blind hole in the shaft of the engine is deeper than I thought. My pin is not engaging at the bottom of that blind hole before I run out of threads on the bolt. So let's go see if I've got a longer shaft uh, pin that I can put on this extraction tool. All right, so I just took a long shank bolt, cut the head and the threads off to get a nice uh, straight shaft, and we'll see if this will work for our extraction tool. Okay, <laughs> the impeller came off, my rod at the end of my extraction tool uh, buckled and is jammed inside this thread, so I'm going to have to see if I can get that out. If not, then I think I just scrapped my, my chipper. Uh, I'm hopeful that I'll get it out. 
Uh, so that's the next thing. All right, so there is my shaft. And you can see it buckled and twisted quite a bit. The end of it mushroomed pretty bad. But it came out pretty easy. And if you look, I don't know if you can see this, but it actually dug into the threads of the shaft. And so now the concern that I have is that I've deformed the threads of the shaft. So I'm going to check that next. All right, so the bolt starts, but doesn't really want to go very far. I don't want to force it because if one of the threads is damaged, I don't want to cause more damage. So I'm going to go see if I've got a 7 16 20 tap and just chase the threads, try to clean them out, and then see if the bolt will go. Okay, so we've got a tap for this now. And so we're going to come in here and clean up these threads. The threads already exist. I just need to clean them up a little bit, chase them. And so I'm hoping that this will go fairly smoothly. I am going to use a little bit of tap fluid for this. Just because I really don't want to mess these threads up and end up losing this chipper. All right, and there is a little bit, a few chips on that tap, so hopefully, there we go, that works beautiful now. All right, so we got the shaft cleaned up. Um, I also want to go ahead and chase threads in this engine block because I don't know how long ago the bolts on some of these holes may have fallen out and so there may be a bunch of gunk in there. So I want to go ahead and get that cleaned out before I go ahead and install the bolts uh, on this cowling and then put it all back together. So these four smaller holes, threaded holes in the engine block I have no reason to believe that they're damaged, but I just want to make sure, get them nice and clean before trying to put a bolt in there. All right, as you can see, I cleaned quite a bit of gunk out of there. So, 
Glad I did that. Go in and wipe all these out. Just try to get as much of the cutting fluid out of there as I can so it doesn't interfere with the thread locker. All right, those threads looking a lot better. Okay, because I really don't want to pull this apart again at some point in the future, I got, got some rubbing alcohol so that I can get in here and really get these clean and get all that cutting fluid and WD-40 and gunk and dirt and whatever else is down in these holes. Get it out of there. I also noticed when I took off the back half of this cowling that uh, whenever that bolt came off of here, it bent this up pretty bad. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but there's a big bulge right here next to the bolt hole, and that's going to prevent this from sitting properly when mounted back on there. So I'm going to see if I can't get that kind of bent back into shape. All right, that's a lot better. So I'll go get the bolts. Uh, and then we can attach this cowling back on and start putting this chipper back together. Okay, so we are ready to put this back on the, the back half of the cowling. Got some brand new bolts and some thread locker. Now, thread locker, it's basically glue epoxy and you put it on the thread and once it dries depending upon the strength of the epoxy or the uh, thread locker that thread's not coming out uh, without some significant work and you want to put it at the tip of the bolt so that as you thread it in it kind of smears along the entire length, gets a nice coat on those threads. All right, I'm going to let those dry and then I'll put the rest of this together and then tomorrow we should be ready to start chipping. So reassembly of this is basically the same as the disassembly, just in reverse. Now, I want to make sure that now that I've got this cowling back on and all the bolts in, that I don't have any interference, and I don't. It's running smooth, so that's a good sign. I want to make sure that this bolt is on tight. I don't want that coming off. And so, next is just this back half of the cowling. Now, I have found that getting this guard back in, inside the cowling, is a lot easier to do before you have all of the bolts installed and torqued down. Because it gives you some wiggle room to get these shear pins in. <laughs> if I can get the cutter pin off of it.
All right, it's running back like it was when we first got it. So tomorrow we'll be able to get back to the chipping, get the uh, litter down for the chickens, and finally get that task taken care of for the year. So thank you for joining us on this repair of our chipper. And for Barely Homesteading, this is Lumberjack saying use it up, wear it out, make it do, or do without. See you next time. Please like and subscribe.